Hi guys, welcome again H2O. This is lesson 10C. We are continuing the topic of being part of the body of Christ. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear Jesus, Heavenly Father, Lord God, thank you so much that you love us and you're faithful with us and so patient with us, Lord. Cleanse us, Lord God. Forgive us of our sins. Protect us, God, from the evil one. Thank you, Jesus, that you provide and meet all of our needs. Forgive us, Lord God, of our shortcomings and our weaknesses. Forgive our lack of faith, Lord God, our lack of trust in you. God, we ask you to teach us more and more every day about yourself. The more we know you, Lord God, the more we trust you, the more our faith is increased because we know you can be nothing but faithful. Thank you, Lord. We just want to give you praise and honor for all who are joining us in this video, in this Bible study, Lord God, I ask for blessings upon them and their family, blessings in their health and in their finances. But more than anything, Lord God, blessings on them spiritually that they would understand this great God that they serve and that they would find their gifts and use them. And that together, Lord, as members of your body, we would all build on your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, coming to you from Baltimore today. Um, we need to go over yesterday's questions and uh, just kind of discuss them a little bit, see how you did. Uh, yesterday you were to read Psalms 122, verse 1, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and 25, and Acts 6, 1 through 7. And I asked you this question. What problem did the early church have, and how did they fix it? Well, this came directly out of Acts 6, verses 1 through 7. When you read that, you discover that as the church grew, and it was growing, it was growing very fast, that they had a problem uh, realizing that it's easy to overlook folks. Nobody meant for them to be overlooked, but they were getting overlooked. And it was a distribution that they were doing to the widows in their uh, church. Of the body. So we find out in the very beginning of it there, even in uh, verse 1, that a complaint rose against the Hebrews by the Hellenists. Well, who are these people? Well, Hebrews are the Jewish, and the Hellenist is a Greek-speaking Jew. So because of the difference in language and because of the difference in their cultures, maybe where they had, grow, had grown up, um, they look differently at each other. Almost as a racial issue, you could be thinking that, well, as a Hellenist, as a Greek-speaking Jew, the reason my, um, our widows are being neglected is because, well, we're Greek-speaking. That's why. It would be very easy to see a racial element here. But you see, in the church, they realize that's not the issue. You're not being neglected because you're a Hellenist. You're being neglected because there's not enough people doing the work. We've grown exponentially, and yet you still think the same few people can do all the work and meet all the needs, and that just isn't possible. So they summoned the 12 leaders, who were the apostles. The 12 apostles gathered everybody together. All right, big church meeting. Here's the problem. This, uh, this one group of widows are being neglected. They're not getting the distribution that everybody else is getting. And we know it's not about not loving them. We know it's not about because they're Hellenists or any other reason, except just we need some people to step up here. But notice, it wasn't that they said anybody that wants to do it should step up and do it. Mm -mm. They recognized they still needed a spirit of excellence. They still needed people qualified to lead to be leaders. Now how did they decide whether someone was qualified as a leader? It, did, it wasn't about age. It wasn't about education. Notice it was, verse 3, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit, full of wisdom, who we can appoint over this business. 
So the qualifications was a good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit, and full of wisdom. That is what fixed their problem. You know, the top 12, they're like, it's not that we are against serving bread to widows. We're not above that. But doesn't it make more sense, uh, part of verse 2, it's not desirable that we should leave the Word of God and serve tables. In other words, it makes more sense, since we're the preachers, that we spend time studying the Word of God and being ready to preach the Word while others are serving bread to the widows or all meeting other needs as well. And uh, that it made sense to everybody. It said there in verse 4, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry of the word. We will preach and we will pray. In other words, we will use the gifts that God has given us. We want some of you to step up to use the gifts you have been given. Busy in God's Verse house. Five. All right, so today I would like you to read Malachi chapter 3. The entire chapter, Malachi, is the last book of the Old Testament. And it's got some really good things in there that still apply today. Hope you're having a great day. I want you to come back. Stay with us. There's so much more to talk about. God bless.